Hi, welcome to this installment of The Resilient Entrepreneur, Building Success and Surviving Setbacks. I'm John Danner. And I'm Mark Cooper-Smith. And today we're going to be talking about the analogy, really, of failure being like gravity, the gravity of failure and failure's gravity. So let's think about that just for a second, because we know that this is a topic that has a lot of baggage. It's tough to talk about. And you, we all know what it feels like to failure. It feels lonely. It feels like you're drowning sometime. You're very isolated. You think that it's all caving in on you. And the interesting thing about failure is that most of us think about it a lot, but we really don't talk about it very much. In fact, that was one of the challenges that we ran into uh, when we first were doing the research of this book. When we asked people about failure, they would say, well, we don't really want to talk about this. Let's just talk about our successes. But the key thing that we wanted to focus on is when we try and innovate, when we try new things, failure is a natural outcome of some of that. So we had to do some work to uncover those failures. And you wouldn't have invited two professors into your laptop or phone or wherever you're watching us from without expecting a little assignment. So here's an assignment that we want you to do after you've finished watching this session. We want you to basically find either a friend or maybe even a complete stranger at the nearby coffee shop and tell them that you've been given this assignment by these two professors at Berkeley. And here's the assignment. I want you to think about a failure that you've been associated with that has affected you. Maybe it had your fingerprints on it, or maybe it didn't, but it was a professional or work kind of failure. In other words, this is not a diary failure. This is not, I'm sorry that you're not getting along with your kids or your significant other. I'm sorry that you're trying to basically lose weight or get more fit. This is not that kind of a failure. This is more of a kind of resume failure, if you will. So think of one, just one, and Think about what it is that you took away from that experience. And when you introduce yourself to your friend or to the stranger at the coffee shop, ask them to do the same thing. And then comes the hard part. We want you to basically share those stories with one another. Don't, you don't need to spend more than a minute or two, but just listen for the first part. Listen to their story. You might want to comment on it. And then they're silent and listen to your story and see what each other has to say. Because and one of the things, and if I may, one of the things that we really want to do is what was your failure? What did you learn from it? And how might you put that to work in the future? And when you share those stories, don't be surprised if there's a little laughter that might come into the, come into the conversation, as it often does when we do this in our talks and classes around the world. But we also don't want you to feel alone because guess what? The reason why Mark came up with this great metaphor that failure is like gravity is because it is a pervasive, inexorable, undeniable fact and force of life. So just so you don't feel too alone. Hey, Mark, you want to run us through the numbers here? Let, let's look at some of the numbers. Absolutely. So Michael Jordan one of the greatest basketball players of all time, missed 52% of his shots. Anybody who's in information technology, major information technology or IT projects, two out of three of them fail to deliver on time, on budget, on spec. Gee, we're on a roll. Hey, wait, we teach in Silicon Valley. Those guys get it, it right? It gets worse. Right. It gets worse. 70% oh. of startups die in the first 18 months. And perhaps even worse than that, of those startups that go on to raise venture capital, three out of four, 75%, don't even return the amount of money that's been invested in them to their investors. Forget about showing a profit or a return on investment. Now, we and don't what a, want oh, you, go ahead, John. Well, we don't want you to feel depressed by these statistics because you all are involved in startups of varying sort. The real trick is how can you improve your odds of success? And one way that most of us try to do that every once in a while, at least is when the year turns and we're having a conversation with ourselves about New Year's resolutions. Mark, how's that look? Well, let's take a look, John. What percentage of New Year's resolutions fail? 88%. Whoa. That's why we get to use the same New Year's resolution every year. Now, John, is there a trick to doing better? Yeah, one of the tricks that turns out, because this has been a fairly well-researched area, is tell a friend 
the one resolution that you really care about, because there's something about that extra degree of accountability that might make it easier for you to keep true to those best wishes that you have for yourself entering the new year. Now, couple, we know many of you, statistics. Yeah. yeah, we know many of you are offering new products into the market. It's tough. It's tough. Just think about the products at the local 7-Eleven or grocery store or drugstore, how many of them show up and then disappear. It's tough doing what all of us do when we are in the business of entrepreneurship. And John, on this final one, coming as, as we do from Silicon Valley, and I'm a patent holder myself, the U.S. Patent Office shows what percentage of patents don't make money, 99%. Now, there may wow. be other reasons for patents to exist, but 99% of patents actually don't generate returns. So this stair step of kind of depressing statistics is really just a statement of humanity. We're all fallible. We're all expert at creating this resource of failure. So we can take a little bit of pride, but more than that, take a look at how failure helps us do something that we might never think that it could do, and that is to fly. It turns out that gravity is one of the four main forces that allowed the Wright brothers to demonstrate that people could fly in flying machines. That weight is the force of gravity. And you'll notice that little incline on the island there. That's one of the small reasons that allowed that plane to lift off. So gravity, gravity enables us to fly. Maybe the same thing can be true in how we use failure as a way to succeed if we're smart enough to use it. So if you want to find some more information and some of our thoughts about this gravity of failure, check out chapter three in our book, The Other F Word. And until next time, we'll see you. Bye for now.